Kate, hear this. I just got to talk with my supervisor. I got a promotion. Really? Congratulations, Connor. I know you've been working hard. I'm so happy for you. You got a promotion last month too. That motivated me so much. Oh, wow. I'm really glad I was a good influence. But you were the one who made your dreams come true. It's not over yet. I got a raise, so my salary got higher than yours. <laughs> Is that so? Congrats. Don't be too upset about it. I know it must be vexing right now. Upset? Do I have a reason to? It's such good news. You lost me. When you got a promotion last month, you gloated about how you got a raise. This is my paycheck. How do you feel now? I didn't mean to seem like I was gloating. I wanted to tell you first. That's how much I was happy. It wasn't from vanity. It doesn't matter what you felt inside. I still felt betrayed. I was so ashamed and pissed. And I knew I'd get my revenge. Sorry. I didn't know. Apologies won't heal my wounds. But... In the first place, it's wrong for a woman to be superior to a man. I'll make you pay for exceeding me. Just you wait. Hey, Connor. There's something that's been bugging me for a while. What? You've been buying more and more stuff from luxury designer brands. Am I? Yeah, you are. Like your new clothes and your watch. Just the other day, I saw you wearing Gucci socks. It's no big deal. I have to look the part now I got a promotion to a higher position. Does your company pay that well? I understand how you got a raise when you got promoted, but I don't remember your job being that lucrative. It's my money. I can use it how I want. As long as you put equal sum in our joint account every month, I have no complaints. Are you sure, though? I am sure. Stop being jealous of me because your salary can't afford luxury. <laughs> I am not. I'm not into that kind of stuff. Stop lying. All girls love a high life. When I started to wear designer ties and watch, the girls in my company started to walk up to me more. <laughs> Is that so? People like different things. Some people like designer brands. I don't care for them. It's not like all of the girls are flocking over you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> they aren't coming to me because of their taste. It's because I'm too handsome for them. <laughs> handsome? What? Are you a narcissist all of a sudden? Anyway, I am steps ahead of you now. By looks and my possessions. Are you still on about that? It's not a competition, Connor. You're just jealous. If you want to outrun me, why don't you go buy some designer bags or something? I told you already. I don't care for designer brands. I'm happy with the stuff that I already have. Really? If that's the case, why don't you have more luxury items? Stop lying to yourself. <laughs> why do you care so much about branding? Luxury brands doesn't necessarily mean you're rich. If you don't stop, I'll tell your mother. What? You're gonna snitch to my mom? That won't be good for you, huh? She always has been strict to you and good to me. If she hears about you trying to dominate me, who knows what she'll do. You coward, don't bring my mom into this. Losers weepers, your persistence will be the end of you. Don't you dare think you've won this. I haven't lost. Understand? Hey, Connor. You did say you're going out today. Huh? I told you yesterday I'm going to fish with a colleague. You're getting old quickly. <laughs> Is that colleague a man? Yeah. What? You think I'm lying? So you're out fishing with a male colleague of yours? That's what I've been telling you. Don't make me repeat myself. I'm going to lose a big one, so stop texting me. Oh, pretty sure you already got that fish. The hell? Going out on a lunch date with a young pretty girl? Why did you lie to me? 
I didn't realize I was in a pond. Wait, are you in the same place? I was. Not anymore. I wasn't feeling great after seeing the two of you. I'm resting at the park after I took some photos for proof. Why were you here? It's out of state! I met up with a friend because I had spare time. We decided to come to this place for the occasion, saw the hype on the internet, and there we found you. What a coincidence to see your husband having an affair. Um, this isn't what it seems. What? Are you going to gloat over how you can get girls now? It's not my fault they're attracted to me. It's my duty to make them satisfied. Don't be defiant. Do you not realize what you're doing? Aren't you sorry for her? Why would I? Have you forgotten you're married? What if she develops feelings for you? You know what'll happen then? What? The fuck? Are you really this thick? There's no future in falling in love with a married man. Stop feeding her empty promises. Or are you feeling something for her? So what if I am? I'm gonna marry her after I divorce from you. Are you serious? Oh, hell yes. Unlike you, this girl's young and pretty. And she knows how to respect a man. Being with her makes me feel important. You don't feel that with me? You can do anything on your own. You can feed yourself. The only times you need me are when you want to use me as a ladder. That may be so, but I'm not convinced. Are you sure you want this? What do you mean? Doesn't she work with you? How do you know she's not in it for the money? She approached you after you got your promotion, right? She isn't like that. How can you be so sure? You never know her true intentions. I asked her when I thought the same thing, if she was only with me because she's after my money. She said no, and I believe her. Easy for her to say. Who knows what she's thinking in her gut? Are you doubting her now? Of course I am. You're intent on marrying her. If that's the case, you're the one who will be in trouble. Why me? We're second cousins. If we get a divorce because of your affair, the rumors will spread like wildfire. You and your mother might lose your place. Oh, that. <laughs> no one will know if you keep your mouth shut. The hell I am. I might not go around telling tales, but I sure am telling my parents the truth. Your mother will hear about it soon enough, and everybody else. You really are dumb. <laughs> if you don't tell anyone, no one will find out. You're calling me dumb? If we're getting divorced, they'll ask us why, and I'm not keeping secrets. You just have to change the story, like we weren't compatible or something. Then there'll be no problems. The hell you are! I'm charging you both alimony. What for? You know exactly what! You had an affair! There's no hiding it once the divorce is settled. The hell? You know I can't pay that! Why not? You've been telling me this whole time that you're earning more than me. How could you afford designer brands with your high salary? You must be able to pay for alimony if you could pay for your freaking watch. Um, about that. Or can't you? I thought you had the money. I do. Then it's settled. I looked it up. The average rate is about $25,000. 25,000? Well, it depends on how long the marriage was and whether there's children. So, I guess it'll be less than that. Oh, okay. Not too fast. Pretty sure you'll pay over 7,000, so I'll be ready if I were you. Fine. And also, you can come by the house for now, but don't talk to me unless it's necessary. How necessary? Don't talk to me unless it has something to do with the divorce. Do your own laundry and cooking. What the hell? You're my wife! That's your job! We're getting a divorce. It's not my obligation anymore. I'm not your housekeeper. Or what? Are wives supposed to take care of their soon-to-be ex-husband after he had an affair? No, but technically you could do it for me. Hell no. Do your own chores. If you're not satisfied, then move out. I'm getting a lawyer to take you down. Goodbye. Hey, Kate, have you moved out yet? Huh? Why the hell would I move out? It's been a week since the divorce was finalized. Stop clinging on to what you don't own anymore. <laughs> oh, but I own this house. Huh? You haven't forgotten, have you? That's my house. It was my father's before me. When we got married two years ago, looking for a house, your father offered to give the deed in my name. Don't you remember? Your name on the deed? Um... 
Yeah. He thought it was better I own it because I was more reliable. You agreed to that. What was I doing at the time? On your phone or something. I don't know. You probably weren't listening closely to the conversation, but you were there and you agreed to it. So this is my freaking house. No way. You weren't intending on moving in with your lover? That's too bad. You need to find somewhere else to stay now. Then give it to me. It's too big for you to take care of. I thought so as well. So, I decided to sell it. I already have a buyer. The hell? You're selling it when you could just give it to me? Yep. I'm not your fairy godmother in this story. No, you're the evil witch. You have been all these years. Like I care what you say about me? Sorry to disappoint. With you debt-ridden and all, you must have been looking forward to living here. No way, Jose. How do you know about that? After I found out about the affair, I went to a private investigator to gather more proof. Turns out, you had more than one skeleton in your closet. You employed a PI? You've been throwing money at expensive stuff like a lunatic. Didn't think you'd be able to afford all of it. The hell. You were too eager to look down upon me. Got carried away when girls started to notice you, huh? The girl you're intending to marry, by the way, has a boyfriend. A what? And quite a few sugar daddies. Doctors, CEOs, you name it. Oh, add lawyer to the list. She's a dangerous one. Seems like she'll sleep with anybody with means. Like I care. Stop lying! You're making all this up because you're jealous of my happily ever after. This is my last kindness I'm giving you as your ex-wife. Warning you to be careful of that woman. How can you be so ignorant? You're jealous of her youth and beauty. You can't trick me. Oh, you really are delusional. And how you go on about her youth? I'm still 30 years old. Only four years apart from your mistress. Stop treating me like I'm so much older. It's rude. But you are older than her. That's a fact. Yeah, it is. Never mind. Treat me like a grandma. I don't care. Go on and blindly worship hers. You have a lot of competition. Good luck. Don't come crawling back to me when you're all alone. What do you mean by that? I have her and my parents, grandparents who support me. I would never be alone. Don't you get it? Everybody knows you cheated on me. What? You snitched? Not me. No way. I was careful not to be seen. Then the calls I'm getting for the past hour. Probably about your affair. Frick. I was ignoring it, thinking it wasn't important. I'm on a date with her. You should pick up. Ignoring won't solve the problem. Won't make anything better, though. I'm too scared. Do something about it. No way. I'm getting involved in your mess. Your father promised me that I'll get my alimony money from you. As long as that's fulfilled, then I have nothing to say. Have it your way. Don't abandon me! We were so close when we were growing up! And who ruined our kinship? Uh... There's not a single chance I'm helping you out. No, please. Pay up for your sins. Have a nice life. I blocked his number after that text, so I haven't heard from my ex-husband ever again. I got the alimony from both the mistress and my ex a few days after that. The girl wasn't careful enough to hide about it, and soon, her boyfriend found out, putting her in a pickle. She quit her job, while my ex works his ass off to pay off his debt. As for I, after selling the house, I moved out. Unlike my ex, who was shunned from the whole family, I still see them often. I intend on enjoying the single life for now. I'm so proud of you. People have been telling me how you're doing and I am genuinely shocked. How long has it been? Of course, I've been thinking about you all the time all these years. Sorry for suddenly texting you. I know it's too much to send at night. Um, who is this? Aw, cute. You know who it is. <laughs> I understand you're still holding a grudge against me. But I know what you're feeling deep inside. You haven't blocked me. That's proof enough. Isn't that right, Mina? Hey, sorry. Are you still at work? What time do you think you can get home? What's up? I'm on the subway right now. Oh, good. I just got these creepy texts. How creepy? Like chainmail? Not exactly. 
For some reason, they know my name. Their name on the screen says Mert. I have no idea what that means. Mert? What the hell is that? <laughs> I might have changed it to that at some point in the past, but I have no memory. They might have changed it. Right, but they seem to know who I am, which is why it's so creepy. Okay, what are they saying? I'll show you when you get back, but it's like, a poem? What? A poem? Yeah, like, I have never forgotten you kind of words. You've been waiting for my text. It's like they think I'm expecting something from them. They seem to be on the first name basis. Is it a dude? Think so. That is creepy for sure. Right? Best to leave them be. You haven't texted back, have you? A little in the beginning. I asked them who they were, but they didn't give me any names. Ignore them. My train ride's almost done. Tell me everything when I get back. Okay, thanks. Be careful. Morning, baby. One missed call. Were you busy yesterday? You still need to text me back, honey. Or were you overjoyed to hear from me? Have the memories of our dating days come back? Me too. <laughs> oh, I'm blushing. We are so alike. Anyway, I'm off to work. Have a nice day, honey. I'll be waiting for your reply. Morning. I'm so glad I'm off on a business trip today. I can't bear waking up to those creepy texts. What? Did they text you again? The one from yesterday? Yep. Even called me this time. For real? I was on the bus so my phone was on silent, so I didn't realize that I got them at the time. What the hell are they thinking? They freaking called me. That's not good. I'm ignoring them, but they're marked as red now. Then they'll definitely start texting again anytime soon. Yeah. Why don't you block the number? It seems like the best option. You may be right, but they might be in an acquaintance. For now, I think I'll turn the notifications off. I want to know who's sending the texts. Are you sure about this? It's best not to give them any recognition. I know. I don't have the time to deal with them anyways. I'll keep ignoring them. You'd better. I want you to be careful too, Mark. I got a bad feeling. I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm a dude. I can take care of myself. I'm more worried about you, Mina. Thanks. It kills me to think about if something happened to you. The feeling's mutual. Just be careful, okay? Who knows what will happen. Okay. You're coming back tomorrow, right? That's the plan. I'll stop by the office at noon, so I'll get home in the afternoon. Uh-huh. Do you want me to come pick you up? If you don't mind the trouble. But are you sure? I'm not busy tomorrow. Pick you up at five? Yeah. Thanks. One missed call. Oi, Mina! Why do you keep ignoring my text? I know you've read them. When are you going to text me back? Oh god. Now I know who you are. You said those exact words five years ago. Finally? How long were you going to keep me waiting, huh? I wanted to talk to you so bad. And? And? You love me, don't you? You can't have that attitude towards me. Sorry, but I don't understand a goddamn word you're saying. I do not love you. At all. Don't lie to me. You're texting me back. So? That doesn't mean I have any feelings for you, creep. I haven't blocked your number purely because you haven't paid the settlement yet. Oh, now I remember why I chose Mert. How could I forget? Mert? M for mama's boy. U for unfaithful. R for reckless money grabber. T for that chauvinistic. E for enemy. What? I totally forgot I changed that. You had all those worst qualities. I even made an anagram so I wouldn't see your name. The hell? Are you making fun of me? You've lied to me when we were dating. After we got married, you and your mother together gave me hell. You had an affair with some girl and used up all the savings. I'm not making fun of you. I'm stating the facts. 
I am totally creeped out by your existence, though. Don't say that! I was sure you'll be waiting for me! That's why I took the time to text you! I was not waiting for you, nor did I want you to text me. I don't care about those things, just pay the divorce settlement. What do you mean you don't care? Because I don't. But I have a proposition for you. What? I only want the settlement money from you. No, we have this very important matter to discuss. You're miserable, aren't you? The fuck? If you give me $1,500 every month, I'll remarry you. That's not a bad deal, is it? You being busy being a CEO. Ignoring about what you said about remarriage, why do you know that I started my own company? I heard it from our mutual friend. Tell you the truth, I'm in a bit of a pickle. I've been going around to borrow cash. Not much success. That's when they told me about you. What a big difference, and such. Don't you have any pride? I can't eat by having pride. I need to remarry you. What happened to the girl you had an affair with? Dumped her. Actually, she was long gone. <laughs> uh, don't you mean she dumped you, not the other way around? Doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, come back to me, will ya? Being single won't benefit either of us, and you know it. We could rekindle our flame. I think I can try to be a good husband for you. Let's have our happily ever after. How delusional are you? No freaking way. Why not? Stubbornness won't get you anywhere. I'm married, you dork. Huh? Although, I expected as much. Didn't think you would try to get back with me this bad. You've managed to become even creepier. Goodbye. Don't talk to me ever again. W wait a bit. Oh, and pay up the divorce settlement. Uh, wait up, Mina. Hey, Mina! Who was that guy you were with? Didn't I tell you? Never. Talk to me again? Stop bothering me. I'm asking you. Answer the question. Who was the guy walking with you at the mall? The mall? You mean my husband? You sure about that? He definitely had the face of a scammer. Guys like that are dangerous. Poor thing. You've been cheated. <laughs> Your face, on the other hand, I've seen better roadkill. What? That was you, wasn't it? Cutting while complaining about showing off. What? Uh, huh? Breathing through your mouth like a creep? I just thought you were one of those guys littering the town these days. I didn't realize it was you at first. Your face changed so much. The war on your forehead gave it away. You couldn't forget me then! Huh? You remembered my beauty mark! I actually remembered because I saw it. Oh yeah, that face kind of looks familiar. The flashback I did not need. What? I am very much happily married after we got divorced. My husband is the only one for me, so I totally erased you from my memory until you showed up. The fact I didn't know it was you when you started texting me is proof. That's a lie. I made you the person you are now. You can't have forgotten me. Disgusting. Seriously, stop it. The past is in the past. I moved on. I will never get back with you. Not in a million years. Did you even look at yourself in the mirror? I am who I am. You're not my type. Too much weight and too unhygienic. Huh? How can I be attracted to that? You're unclean to the point I almost gagged. Your personality isn't better either. You had nobody else to turn to. Isn't that why you tried to slither back to me? How dare you? I can't even imagine. But we were married at one point. So? We were married. Now, we are divorced. We're total strangers, aren't we? And you definitely can't top my husband. On the inside and out. Oh, sure I can. I don't clad myself up in designer clothes like your leech or a husband. You won't find anyone who's as humble as me. Humble? You? Don't make me laugh. You cheating, deceiving SOB. Humble? Who keeps sending creepy texts? Humble? Who tuts his tongue at me from jealousy? Humble? Do you even know the definition of humble? Stop it! Stop! 
just the truth. And also, you have no houseworking skills at all. I do too! So much you could write a book on it? Huh? What book? My husband is an excellent housemaker. He loves cooking most of all. A dude who does housework? <laughs> oh, what a sissy. That sissy earns $80,000 a year. Surely you make more than that if you're making fun of him, huh? What? I thought he was a housemaker. He used to share his recipes and tips to cleaning on his blog, which became sensational, to the point to where he got a book deal. Just because he wrote a book, he gets 80000 a year? Damn straight. He also has product collaborations here and there. Perhaps he even surpassed the point beyond just being a housemaker. Can you imagine doing that yourself? Hell no! I only contacted you because my mother told me to. You still listen to your mother. She kept nosing in when we got divorced. She still has power over you? Grow up. That's irrelevant! Just divorce that guy and marry me. Hey, 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 hey. What did your mother tell you to do? Was it, she's the only one suitable for my baby? It would make mommy very happy if you remarried her. Ugh, just imagining that conversation makes me want to barf. Shut up! <laughs> Seriously, shut up! Mother finally forgave you. She insisted women should stay at home, but she finally agreed that you were the only one who'd make me happy. That hag did? No offense to hags. That hag? Don't badmouth my mother! This is your only chance! She rarely changes her opinion on things. Is that so? Tell me your address. I'm coming over now. I'll talk to that guy about getting a divorce with you. Are you still there? My mother's coming with me. Tell me the address now. Come on, Mina. Admit that you have feelings for me. Um, hey. What now? You didn't have to ignore me when we saw each other today. It was definitely awkward for the person you were with, too. Huh? Is that what you think? I already told them about my situation. They seem to have understood perfectly. Oh. If they were your friends, why didn't you introduce us? Me and my mother. Why would I? Because we're getting remarried. We're going to be a family. It's best to get acquainted beforehand. They seemed older, so I'm guessing they're business associates? You realize today's Sunday. Why would I meet up with business associates on a Sunday? What? And I am not marrying you again. Why do you expect me to introduce you to them? To my in-laws? Your in-laws? But you... you seem so friendly with them, uh, coming out from the house. The fuck? Were you following me? I don't know how you found the house. But I'm currently living in with my husband's parents. We're having tea, by the way. What? You're living with them? Why? What do you mean, why? I made the suggestion. What's that got to do with you anyways? Because! You never agreed to live in with my mother when we were married. Why are you okay with living with his parents? You could have been okay with living with mine. Don't be silly. Unlike your hag of a mother, my in-laws are great people. What the fuck? My mother's the greatest person! The hell she is. My in-laws never bully me. They even take good care of me more than their own son. Keep so much to themselves because they don't want to bother us. How could I not interact with them? Same as my mother! Certainly not. For instance, your mother? Wasn't she bickering about us when we passed by? Why? Don't you ladies look nice? You don't have a clue how hard we've had it. You both must be sleeping around to afford your livings, and such. Uh... You've already lost. My mother-in-law never lets people's words bug her. She told me not to care for them. Your mother can't resist that temptation. Therefore, you guys lost. This isn't about losing. Well, yeah. It isn't even a competition. You lot only have the knowledge to badmouth other people. My husband and in-laws can care about the well-being of others. You guys aren't even in the same playing field. Don't you mock me. I can't help it. You should stop with your delusions. Insulting me in the process? Why would I still have feelings for you? How do you even come up with these lies? Seriously, you disgust me. I don't freaking care about you or your hag. Get the F out of my life. Please, help us. I want to marry you and start a new life. 
My mother wants that life for me too. Help me out. Let me start over. GFY, you only want the money. Leave me the F alone. B but If you keep pestering me, I'll have you pay up the settlements in a hole. It's bothersome dealing with it bit by bit. I want it to be done with you. That's not possible. How about I let you choose? Pay up once and for all, or leave me the F alone? Which do you prefer? If you disappear from my life, I won't have police charges against you. You just keep paying for the divorce settlements as you should. How about that? He never replied after that, so, just in case, I had a lawyer involved to get an answer from him. He promised he'll never bother me again. His mother seems to not be able to keep that promise, though. She's sniffing around to get my intention. My relationship with my in-laws is that of a real family. Because I got that divorce, I got to meet Mark, and I intend to keep my happiness for as long as I can. Alrita, are you there? I have a little something that I'd like to talk to you about. I was just wondering what you thought you were doing when you came over to our house and didn't even bring us any gifts. You're my brother's wife, and you didn't even think to bring us sweets when you visited our house where we live with our parents? Oh, hello, Carrie. I'm sorry if there was any kind of mix-up. I didn't bring you any food from the places I'd visited now. But I did make some handmade treats that I brought and which your mom seemed to like. That's why I made even more of them and brought them over. <laughs> Excuse me? Are you seriously trying to pass those cheap little cookies off as anything special? I threw them all away without even tasting one. Wait, what? You threw all of those cookies away? That's right. We don't eat pathetic little things like that. We're way above that. You do know that both my parents run their own companies, right? We're kind of a big deal in these parts, got it? My parents made sure to only give me the highest quality food ever since I was little. I don't think there is anything wrong with enjoying fancier snacks or anything like that, but I cooked those cookies for you myself and you just threw them all in the garbage. Well, duh. Where else are you supposed to dump your trash but in a trash can? <laughs> How could you say something like that? What's the matter with you? Ah. This is the problem with my brother marrying some country nobody like you. You really don't know how the real world works at all, do you? <laughs> Next time you show up to my parents' house, you better bring us some real high quality stuff. And you better leave the price tag on so I can check. If you don't, I don't care what it was that you brought. It's going straight in the trash. Hey. Dean, are you there? We seriously need to talk about those cookies I baked. I'm afraid that I should have just listened to you telling me that it was a bad idea to do that for your family. Even your sister said they were too beneath her and threw them all away. Well, I tried to warn you. <laughs> I told you not to bother doing something handmade for the family, and that they would have preferred to get something fancy that you bought. Of course, my mom was the only one who had anything nice to say about your cookies, but it was only because she was being polite. The next time you show up to my parents' place, just use your head a bit more and buy something nice for them. But I don't have the kind of money to drop on the kind of snacks that would be fancy enough for your family. Besides, I worked really hard on those cookies and it was a really complex recipe. What do you mean you don't have any money to spend on a real gift for uh, my family? I already told you that we are barely within our budget as things stand right now. I think you really need to go and figure out what you're going to do about your business. Oh, trust me, I know what I'm doing with it, okay? But I can't move forward with anything until I've completely rebolted from the ground up. I don't think you really have any clue how hard I'm working to try and save that business right now. I'm working from sunup to sundown, and you still have the gall to say that I'm not doing enough. I'm sorry, Dean. That really wasn't what I was trying to say. I wasn't trying to put any blame on you. It's just that... Well, I think you've been going out a lot recently, right? I just mean that since you have seemed to have so much free time to be doing that, I guessed I assumed you'd already done what you needed to do. And if you have all that money to be going out all the time, I would really appreciate it if you could give me some more money to spend on things for the house. 
Because right now, I'm the only one who is putting their own money into those kinds of things, and that's why things are so tight right now. This just proves that you really have no clue at all what you're talking about. I'm not going out drinking so I can party and have fun. Those are important business dinners, and it takes time to do what I'm trying to do. So I'm sorry. You think things are tough for you. You're just going to have to deal with it. But, Dean... I just said that I've already been putting so much of my own money into our expenses already. I'm not trying to pin the blame on anyone. I am just saying that I'm working with a very tight budget right now. And on top of that, I'm still sending money to your family every month as well. Excuse me? Because what is that supposed to mean? I'm talking about $1,500 I send to your family every month. And from what I understand, they're not a place where I can just stop sending that money. So that's another reason why things are so tight around the house. And that's why I don't understand why I am expected to bring such expensive treats to your family when I'm already doing that for them. Is that supposed to be some kind of joke? You can't stop sending the money. Then they'll all know that we're facing some kind of financial troubles. But don't you think that it would be better if they did know? I mean... It's a lot of money for us to send to them. But for your family, it's gotta mean almost nothing, right? Besides, the whole reason you started sending them money in the first place was just so that you could try and show off your wealth, right? What did you just say to me? Well, tell me, Dean. Am I wrong about that? It was fine when your business was doing okay. But now that we've fallen on hard times, we have to think about how we spent our money. And... I just don't think that it's realistic to want to keep sending money the way we are. But my parents raised me, and this is my way of paying them back for all of their hard work. Not to mention the fact that I was only able to start my business because my parents gave me the capital I needed to get it off the ground. That's the real reason why I'm sending them the money. Just don't go labeling my actions when you don't even understand the deeper meaning behind them. And again, Dean, I think it's really great that you want to do that. Admirable even. But the fact of the matter is that we can't afford to keep paying that and meanwhile, your family can afford not to get that money. Not to mention the fact that I'm the one earning all the money that is being sent to them. I don't think you should feel any shame in telling them that you have to stop for a while until you get your business back on track. I've had just about enough out of you. Do you have any idea the kind of shame that would bring to me? Not only would I stop giving my family money, but they would know that my business is in trouble. But everyone would stop respecting me and I'd have nothing. I really feel like you're blowing this all out of proportion. Well, either way, we can't stop sending the money. Because my parents say they're using it to help send Carrie to college. She wants to go study abroad and do internships and she needs money for all of these things. So we can't just stop. It's not like she's just squirreling it all away either. She's using that money. Dean, I'm really happy that your parents are using our money to support your sister. But I think my point still stands. Maybe at the very least, we could just reduce the amount of money that we're sending to her. It might be a good chance for Carrie to start working and earning her own money. She doesn't have time to find a job. She needs to be studying and only that. How dare you even suggest trying to make my poor little sister work while she's a student? You just need to learn to shut up about things you don't know about and let me handle this. Just keep focusing on earning money until I fix up my business and make everything right again. Hey, Carrie. I was wondering if I could talk to you for a moment. I was just curious about what the meaning of this letter from you is. I opened it and there were divorce papers inside. Oh, you mean it finally arrived? Well, since you know what they are already, I don't need to bother explaining. Just go ahead and sign them for me, okay? Then send them back there and Dean and I will take them to the courthouse to have them processed. After that, you can pack them and leave. Wait, what is all this? What are you talking about? Do you need me to spell this out for you or something? You are not good enough to be my brother's wife. So I am going to be needing you to be divorced. And so I could get rid of you. <laughs> you can't be serious about this, Carrie. Of course I am. I never liked you from the very first day that I met you. A lowly country girl like you has no right getting with anyone from our prestigious family. 
and I realized that I had to do something the last time you brought over those horrible cookies. I knew that if that was going to be your way to show your respect to my family, then you truly have no place here. And so that's why you sent me divorce papers? That's right. I'm tired of you holding my brother back all the time and burdening him with your problems. My brother is brilliant and could do whatever he wants. That's why he runs his business so well. In fact, that's another reason why I knew I had to get rid of you. Dean's business should be doing amazingly, and yet for some reason, it doesn't seem to be growing at the rate that it should, which means that someone has to be holding back its developmental potential, and that person can only be you. <laughs> Are you kidding me with this right now? Well, obviously how well a couple is doing ripples out and affects other parts of their lives, which means that if Dean had a better wife, then his company would be doing better too. The only factor holding back Dean's potential is you. That's why you are going to divorce my brother, leave our family, and never come back. Do you really even think Dean would miss you if you were gone? I've already found a great replacement for you. You found your brother a new woman who you think he should marry? I don't understand how you could go and do this to me. Well, the last time he came over to visit, I introduced Dean to a good friend of mine who I thought would be the perfect match for him. She's young and pretty and smart, everything that you're not. Why are you being so mean to me? What did I ever do to you? I wasn't finished. The thing is that the two of them are already dating now. I've heard all about it from my friend. Apparently, Dean works quite quickly when the right person comes around. Wait, no, that can't be right. You mean not only did you try to introduce your brother to someone new, but now the two of them are dating? <laughs> so you're finally starting to piece it together now, huh? But that's right, my brother is sick and tired of dealing with a no good wife like you. That's why you need to hurry up and end this shame of a marriage. You need to set my brother free so that he can finally be the person he always meant to be. You need to free Dean from you, Rita. <laughs> well then I guess that means I won't have to be sending you any more money then. What are you talking about? I mean that I've been sending your parents $1,500 every month. Not Dean, just me. And I've heard that your parents have been putting that money towards helping you stay in college and be able to focus on your studies. But since I'm breaking up with my husband, I guess you'll have to learn to take care of yourself. Wait just a minute there. I seriously have no idea what you're talking about. I know that I get money every month, but all that comes from my brother. He sends my parents that money every month so that he can repay them for all the hard work they did raising him. Where do you get off trying to take credit for that? I get off taking credit for the money because your brother's company is actually deep in the red and in serious trouble. Wait, what do you mean his company is in trouble? I don't understand. I'm afraid that your brother isn't the business of on that you think he is. In fact, I don't think you'd know anything about the real reason why his business hasn't been growing the way you think it should have been. But I'm afraid it's not just stagnating. It's already on the verge of bankruptcy with very little sales and huge overhead. That's why I've been the one sending your parents money from my own earnings. No, you're lying to me. That can't be true. There's no way that my brother's company is about to declare bankruptcy. And Dean has money. He's taking my friend out on expensive dates and everything. Is he really spending all that much money on her? That's right. Ever since they started seeing each other, she tells me all about how Dean has been taking her out to the most expensive restaurants in town. Plus, he's buying her gifts like purses and clothes and even jewelry. How can he say that he doesn't even have money? He's even buying her expensive gifts like that? Just how much money has he been hiding from me? He's been telling me that I have to send his parents money because he never has enough to afford to. I don't believe you! There's no way that you've been sending the money this whole time. And I don't believe what you said about Dean's business either. You're just upset because you're getting divorced and that's why you're trying to scare me. Well, if you have time to make up nonsense like this, then why don't you just sign the divorce papers already? 
I heard from Carrie that you signed the divorce papers. Something to the courthouse yourself. <laughs> Give me so much trouble over the years, but you have to be honest. Didn't see us ending up like this. Well, I heard quite a bit from your sister as well. Like, about how you've been running around with one of her friends behind my back. And while you've been having me send your family money every month, you have been sending her every cent you have on her. You're just horrible, Dean. Oh, jeez. Is this what you want to talk about right now? Well, I don't care. My new woman is cute and amazing. I'm better than you in every way. I don't care who I date, really. As long as they're a good wife. You seriously need to give it a rest already. You have been making me work myself to the bone to provide for your family while you've been carrying on a fair. And taking this girl out expensive restaurants and buying her expensive gifts. Just where were you getting all that money from? It's money that I made from my job and that I can spend however I like. Thank you very much. Well, this just settles it for me. I'm glad that we're getting a divorce. I can't believe I let myself pour my hard-earned money into your family while you did this to me. Oh, trust me, the feeling is mutual. This divorce can't happen fast enough. In fact, I think that I finally see a light at the end of the tunnel for my business, too. Once I get you out of my life, I'll be able to think much more clearly with my new wife by my side. You're really going to pretend like it's just now that your business is turning around? Your business has been doing well for a while now, hasn't it? That's why you can afford to go out so much, and that's why you can afford to spend so much on this new girl. I don't need to explain anything to you. We're getting divorced, remember? That's right, we are. I just hope you can afford a lawsuit I'm about to serve you with. Not to mention the splitting up of our assets that's going to happen. You do realize that I'm going to take half of everything you own, don't you? And that's to say nothing of the legal fees you pay for your affair. You've always been a selfish woman. Now it's just in full display. Well, you were the one who went and cheated on your wife. And to think that even your sister was on this with you, you have no idea the stress that you have been putting on me. But I am going to hire a good lawyer and make sure you pay for what you've done. <laughs> I doubt that. You don't even have the money to hire a bad lawyer. Besides, what lawyer would want to take a case from some nobody from the countryside? Oh, you don't need to worry about that at all, Dean. You see, I'm friends with one of the wives of your most important business partners. She knows a ton of good lawyers and told me that if I ever need help, I just need to ask her. Wait, the, the wife of one of my business partners? That's right. We bonded over being the wives of the CEOs running their own company, so we became friends quickly. Not that you've ever noticed with how little attention you pay to me, but I already have a lawyer in mind who would be willing to represent me. But wait, if you sue me for all of this, then everyone is going to know about our divorce. If that happens, then everyone is going to know about what I did that led to it. And just who is this friend of yours? Anyway, huh? Aw, you mean you don't want everyone to know about the kind of person that you really are? Because I don't mind letting them know in the slightest. Wait, no, let's just talk this out a little more. Anyways, I've already sent out the divorce papers, so there is no going back now. Good luck with that new girl of yours, Dean. <coughs> you really are a horrible woman, do you know that? How dare you try and take half of my brother's money in this divorce? I am well within my rights to do. Thank you very much. Besides, your brother has been enjoying more than half of my hard-earned money for a long time. Oh please, don't get acting as if you even made all that much to begin with. The scale is totally different, but whatever, it's not like it's even a big deal for Dean. He can make all that money back in an instant. Hmm, are you really sure about that? Of course I am. I'll admit I was worried when I asked Dean if it was true that his business was in danger of bankruptcy, and he said yes. But then, he explained to me that he had it fixed and everything was back on track. So now I know that Dean is going to be just fine, and soon he's going to be married to my friend and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh really? So then he is still seeing her? 
You may have felt like you had some power because you were sending my parents money every week, but you forget that I already come from a rich family and that losing your money means nothing to them. The fact that you could really thought that you could try to lure that over me just shows how little you really know about how things work. Both my parents are CEOs and I have a brother who starred bankruptcy in the face and conquered it. No one is going to miss you once you're gone, Rita. I see. So basically, you're telling me that you have no idea what's really going on here. Like, about how your family is going to file for bankruptcy this year. Oh, just give it a rest already. And as for Dean, while his company may be recovering, I don't think it's quite as stable as you might think. In fact, I hear that he's been losing client after client, so it may be too early for any of this. I seriously have no clue what you're talking about at all. How do I know that you're not just making all of this up? What would I have to gain from lying about any of this to you? I've only ever told you about the truth. I did about $1,500 a month too, remember? In fact, the reason that your brother was having me pay your parents instead of him was because he knew that he couldn't afford to keep paying them that much. But when I would talk to him about it, he would even allow me to reduce the amount I was sending. But even your parents reached out and said that things were tough for them and that they couldn't yet have us stop sending that money. Did they really say that to you? Apparently, things are going so well for them financially speaking. I hear that at this point, all your parents really have going for them is their savings. So, I wonder, what's going to happen now that I've stopped sending money? You're lying to me! There's no way that my family's company is going to fall apart. You're making all of this up! Believe me or not, it doesn't make a difference. But at least they'll be able to rely on your brother for financial help, right? That's right, Dean will be able to take care of them. Except, what was that you mentioned about him losing clients? Was that really true as well? It's just what I've heard through the grapevine. But since we're not married any longer, I guess I can't say for sure. I only know what I know from the wife of one of his clients. But she would know better than that about anyone else you could hear from. I don't understand. How could this be happening? I thought my brother said his business was back on track. He's just about to marry my friend and you're telling me he's on the verge of bankruptcy again? You better have a little family meeting and see if you all can't figure out what to do. I know that you still have a year left before you can graduate, but who is going to afford your tuition now? You might need to think about finding a job to support your family, Rita. <laughs> no way! I'm not going to find a job. I was going to take a year off. It's not fair! How could this be happening to me? You were going to take a year off from your studies? That's right. I've been studying for a while now, and I want a little break. So, I'm not going to do anything but relax and travel for a year so that I can come back to school refreshed. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure if you'll be able to do all of that now. But it's not fair. It's what I want, and I always get what I want. <laughs> well, good luck with that. <coughs> it wasn't long after that, that Carrie's parents both had to declare bankruptcy. In the aftermath, it turned out that part of their severe debt was coming from the amount of money that Carrie was using for herself to support her lavish lifestyle. And as more and more clients decided to stop working with Dean, things weren't looking good for him either. The money for Carrie's tuition quickly dried up, and she realized that she would have no choice but to at least start working part-time. She complained the whole time about how working was beneath her and how she was an heiress, but her pride was clearly hurt and before long, she stopped showing to class at all. Hey there, Sally. I heard from John that you were going to be having a wedding. Is that really true? <laughs> Hello, May. Yes, it's true. I am getting having a wedding. Harold and I have already been married for five years, but we never had a chance to have a wedding. And of course, it's something we've always wanted to do, but just have the chance to right now. Hold on a second, you mean that you've been married this whole time but never had a wedding? And you're only just able to afford to have one now? 
Wow, I guess being poor must suck way more than I thought it did. <laughs> Sorry, what exactly do you mean? I mean, it must not be easy when your husband makes as little money as Harold does. But even so, I can't believe it took you both five years to finally do this. You really are pathetic. Sorry, I meant you really have my pity. <laughs> but in my case with John, we were able to have our wedding right away. May, I think we've already talked about this, but Harold and I aren't really poor. What are you talking about? I mean, you guys are so poor that even you have to work just to get by, right? Could you imagine not marrying a man who can provide for a family all by himself? Well, I think that times have changed a little since then. And besides, the two of us actually like our jobs, so it works out. Not only that, but we've been married five years and never had any money troubles. If anything, the biggest problem we have as a couple is managing our schedules. We have different projects going at the same time, and we've hardly even had time to plan a wedding, let alone have one. There you go again, coming up with the most lame excuses. You know that you can just be real with me and say that you don't have enough savings between the two of you. I mean, just because I'm richer than you doesn't mean we can't still be honest with each other. I am your sister-in-law, after all. I understand that, but what I'm trying to honestly tell you is that we really aren't poor. Oh, yes, totally. And I'm sure you both really just love your jobs, too. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm living the dream life of a housewife whose husband takes care of everything for her. All I worry about is being there for my husband and kid at home. In other words, I'm doing what a good wife in a good marriage should be doing. I am really happy that you are content with where you are in life right now. But I don't think it's fair for you to claim that there's a right way to be a wife. And I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to work either. Well anyways, congrats on finally getting your wedding, I guess. Good luck paying for it with your manager's salaries though. <laughs> hey John, how's it going? I just had a quick question for you. Are you really going to let May continue on as a housewife? I thought you said that you get a pay cut and things were going to be a bit tight money-wise for you. Hey, sis. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Things are pretty tough since May still isn't working at all. But I feel like it's not often you message me, especially about stuff like this. Well, May actually reached out to me to talk about my upcoming wedding, but she didn't know that Harold and I hadn't actually had one. But anyways, she seemed to assume it was because we were too poor to afford to have one. Are you kidding me? Not at all. She seems to have the idea in her head that if both people are working that the couple must be poor. And then she started to put me down for not being a stay-at-home like herself. I can't believe that she would say something so rude to you! Oh, sis, you just should not pay attention to anything that comes out of her mouth. I don't know what her problem has been, but she has just been causing trouble for everyone around her. To be honest, I think she has some bad influences with her friends. Bad influences? What do you mean by that? Actually, come to think about it, I really feel like you haven't been looking so good. Is everything okay at home? I really appreciate you asking after me, Sally. But yeah, I'm okay. Or, I don't know, maybe I'm not really. I've just been so worried about all of this financial stuff, it's kind of been driving me crazy. Are things really looking that bad for you? I was already barely making enough money to support the two of us without May having to work. It was enough to make sure that we were never wanting, but we certainly weren't living in the lap of luxury or anything. But when we had our wedding, I basically went through all of my savings to pay for it all. Originally, we agreed that May would find a job once our kids started school and wasn't in the house as much. But May said it was always her dream to be a stay-at-home mom. And I think it's the other moms from the preschool who have been telling her that she doesn't have to find a job. I mean, our kid is already in school. May said she would be working by now, but things haven't changed. Wow, I had no idea about any of that. That is so much, and I'm sorry you have to deal with it. Again, though, I think it's because all the moms from the preschool don't work. So I think that May feels like she can't either if she wants to fit in with her new friends. She has it in her head that the only thing a wife should ever do is help her husband from the house. 
But if I don't make enough money for us, then that isn't going to be possible. You mean that there really aren't any moms at your preschool who work? Wow. The other dads who send their kids there must really be loaded then. That's the impression I've gotten anyways. So, while I'm able to focus on my work, getting a raise is a totally different story. I've talked to some of the moms at the preschool and many of their husbands are managers who run businesses. Wow, so they really have an easier time giving themselves raises when they need to then, I take it. You nailed it right on the head, and I've tried explaining this to May, but she just refuses to listen to what I have to say. I told her that I really need her to work, but she just doesn't want to hear any of it. Wow. I'm so sorry you're having to go through all of this, little bro. It's really so much to deal with. She tells me that she works hard for the family at home, and that's her job. And I think that there is nothing wrong with wanting to stay at home if your budget allows it. But you have to prioritize having all of the basics before you can just refuse to work. I know that, but it just makes it so much worse that she uses being a housewife as a way to put you down. It's really embarrassing, to be honest. So anyways, again, I'm so sorry that she's treated you poorly. Oh, John. You don't have anything to apologize for, at all. In fact, I would like you to come over to my house once you finish work today. Harold has recently gotten really into gardening, and we have way too many vegetables that we need to give away. We would love if you came over, picked out some of your favorite vegetables, and took them home with you. Oh, wow, that would be amazing, thank you. Also, we are, of course, going to invite you to our wedding. But I really would like to see you looking a bit better on that day. Just make sure you're taking care of yourself, okay? Of course, sis. Thank you so much for listening. It means so much to me. Of course. Although, I think I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell May where you got the vegetables from. It might just make more problems for me in the future. Oh, Sally, I just wanted to say how sorry I am. I know that your wedding is today and all, but I'm afraid that Harold and I won't be able to make it. Wait, neither of you are going to be able to come to our wedding? We really wanted to be there, but we both have to stay at home to be with our kids, so sorry about that. <laughs> Besides, we didn't want any bad influences on our kid from all the other poor people who would be there today. Hold on a second, is that why you're not going to come today? You think the people I invite to my wedding are going to have a bad influence on your child? Of course they would! You're having a poor wedding for poor people, aren't you? I can't have my kids saying that kind of thing. It would give the wrong idea of who it's okay to associate with. Maybe if you were to have a nicer wedding, things might have worked out differently. It's too bad you weren't successful enough to have a better one. Hold on a second. Please tell me that you aren't serious about this. This would have been my child's first wedding. But I know that as his mother, I had to protect him from this so that his first would be a much nicer one. There was no way he was ever going to be able to go to your wedding. Get it? Besides, you've had five years to plan this and you still could only afford such a shoddy affair. Okay, May. I have had just about enough of this. I do not know where you got the idea that my family was poor, but you are not going to belittle my wedding like this. I'm not belittling anything. I could belittle your wedding anymore because it's already so tiny and sad. But anyways, as a mother, I have a duty to protect my kid of unsavory things like your wedding. Of course, you don't have any kids, so there is no way that you understand what I am saying. Maybe if you had some more money, you could have afforded to have a kid, though. Maybe you'll get some money as a wedding gift that can help you start a family the right way this time. Excuse me? But, you know, even though no part of me wants to expose my child to this kind of thing, I could be convinced to change my mind. I got it. We'll agree to go to your wedding in exchange for giving you no wedding present. Our presents will be our present. May, you were not even invited to my wedding in the first place. What do you mean by that? I mean that you are more than welcome to stay home all day today if you want. And while you're there watching your kid, your husband, my little brother, is going to be there for me at my wedding. What are you talking about? Oh, look! 
There's John right now. I think we just about have everyone who was invited. Okay then, thanks for watching the kid and letting my little brother come. Now, you hold on just one second. I had no idea John was going to be at your wedding. I even told him that he didn't need to show up if he didn't want to yesterday. And why am I the only one who isn't invited to your wedding? Wow, I really didn't think you would be so upset over this. If I had known you felt so deeply about the issue, I might have actually invited you. I don't care about your stupid little wedding. I just want to know what my husband thinks he's doing. The thing that we also wanted to avoid having a bad influence on your kid. John told me all about how you guys are barely scraping by with the amount of money he makes. And with the meager kinds of meals you've been able to afford recently. John didn't want to expose your kid to the high quality catering we're having. I guess he didn't want his only child to realize just how poor you both really are. Hold on. What are you saying? I just mean that this wedding has been five years in the making. All of our friends and family are here in this venue that we made sure was beautifully decorated. Not only that, but we went to some of the best caterers in the city to provide the food and drinks. We are talking about a pretty fancy affair overall. You have got to be kidding me right now. I had no idea you were having such a nice wedding. That much is obvious. But anyways, we don't want to crush your kid's perception of his parents, so... Maybe it would be better if you stayed with him all day so that he doesn't know about any of this. Although I know that it's going to be hard for you after all. You're constantly complaining to John about how little you have to eat, right? I just also wanted to spare you the taste of the high life before you had to go back to scrounging for scraps. Is this supposed to be some kind of joke or something? You're not supposed to be looking down on me. I'm supposed to be looking down at you. Don't you pretend like you're richer than me. But it's nothing of the sort. I really am just worried about you and your son and don't want to cause any drama at home. So that's why John agreed to come here by himself as a representative for all three of you. That way you could all save money by only sending one person. But when you say that, it makes us sound like we're poor. We're not like you. We don't both have to work. My husband makes enough to allow me to stay at home full time. Are you really sure about that? Because John paints a very different picture. Honestly, hun, you need to face the facts. We are poor. I could barely afford a wedding present for my own sister. Wait, hun. We? Don't tell me this is John. It is. And you really need to stop pretending like we are rich and that it's okay to look down on people. I know that you really want to be a stay-at-home mom, but I think it's time that we face the facts. What facts? What do you mean by that? You make enough money for me to be a stay-at-home mom, right? Do you realize that I only had $5 left in my bank account after I bought Sally's wedding present? How can you not be scared for us when that's the reality? You only had $5 left? That's right. You have no idea how hard it was to see that balance left in my account. I work really hard and it always feel like we're still living right on the edge. But I thought that there would be more money in there. There was at least $35 in there last time I checked. Do you really think that that's all that much better? How can a family survive an emergency if that's all they have? I need you to start working, May. We can't keep going on like this. We need more money coming in. No, I don't need to work yet. I'll just spend even less money. I promise. I'll try so hard to keep the house clean and take care of our son. Think of all that I do so that you can focus on your work. Besides, all the other moms at the preschool don't have to work. It isn't fair. I am really grateful for all the work at home that you do, May. I really am. But the fact is that we can't survive like this and something has got to change. You're really serious about this, aren't you? I understand and really respect why women might want to stay in the home and take care of things there. The reality is, however, that we aren't in an economic situation where we can afford to do something like that. I mean, we have a kid now. We need to be able to save money for his future. We will be better parents by both working than not. I don't know what to say. Th this can't be happening. It is. 
And you and I are going to have a long talk when I get back home about how we as a couple are going to plan for the future. In fact, I'll be honest, I'm considering a divorce. You want to get a divorce? You can't be serious. I am literally starving myself just so that you can continue with this unsustainable dream of being a stay-at-home mom. I can't see how we're going to survive as a couple if this is going to be how things are. Sally, are you there? I need a job right now. I have decided to work, but I really need a job. Oh, May, well, congratulations on coming to that decision. I think it's great that you want to start working, but I am not sure you'll be able to find a job here. Please, even an entry part-time position would be great for me. I can start as soon as I drop off my son at his preschool and go until I have to pick him up. Well, that's good thinking. I think a part-time job would be great for someone in your position. But the thing is that other part-time jobs pay so little. And no place is willing to pay me a lot because they don't think I have enough experience. Everywhere I look, I'm only offered minimum wage. So please, can you get me a job with your company? I heard from John that you actually make a lot of money. Like $100,000 a year. Well, surely you must be really busy if you're doing a job that pays that much, right? Don't you need like a secretary or something? Is that what you would like to work as? Yes, and I need to be paid at least 30 bucks an hour. Oh, and also, I don't know how to use a computer at all. So you'll also have to provide me with training, which should be paid for as well. I'm really sorry, but I don't think we have an opening for a position like that right now. Well, then what about Harold, your husband? He's an illustrator or something like that, right? I can probably draw okay. So how about you ask him to hire me as an assistant? Just make sure I'm getting paid at least 30 bucks an hour, okay? I'm sorry, but I wouldn't even hire you for five bucks a house. What is that supposed to mean? I mean that I'm really glad you want to work, but you need to do a little more research about how job hunting works. There are plenty of part-time jobs that require no experience, and I would look into those first. Wait, no, please. You really aren't going to hire me? To be honest, you haven't really given me many good reasons as to why I should. Work on your skills and come back to me, and then maybe we can talk. Please don't go. I've tried applying for these jobs, but they were also so stupid, so I gave up. You gave up looking for other jobs? Yeah, but I have to find something this week or else John is going to leave me. He's been so mad and I really think he might do it. So I really, really need a job. You mean that he's really going to go through with it? I thought he was just bluffing. So did I. But when I got back home, I realized that he was serious about this. He really expects me to find a job. Working a job should be way easier than taking care of the house and raising a kid. Why can't John just make more money like the other husbands at the preschool? You know, I asked John something just like that, and that was when he seemed to get the most upset with me. Yeah, it sounds like you're kind of ignoring everything he's been trying to impress upon you. And now he's telling me that I have to find a job no matter what. He said it doesn't matter what it is, I just have to find something. And if I don't, then he is going to leave me. Wow, I don't think I've seen my brother that upset with someone. I tried to reason with him, but he wouldn't have any of it at all. So now I've been looking for jobs, but I can't find any. I told people that I don't want to do work where I'm standing all day and that I want to be paid more than they are offering and they all turn me down. Well, it sounds like you need to settle for something or else your marriage is going to be over. That's why I'm coming to you, hoping to find a job that I wouldn't mind doing as much. Please, even... $20 an hour would be great. I won't lie. I hope that John does divorce you. He gave you clear conditions to prevent this, and you're making this way more difficult than they need to be. So you're saying you don't care if my husband leaves me? I think that him and your son would both be happier if he did. Anyways, I can't help you, and this is a problem between you and my brother. So leave me out of it. Good luck with the job hunt. After that, May began desperately searching and finally found a job at a gas station. 
narrowly managing to avoid being divorced by John. Now that she is working, however, it seems that May is starting to realize the value of a hard day's work. My brother, on the other hand, still hasn't let her off the hook. I hear they've stopped talking about divorce, but in the meantime, John has secretly found a new job that pays much better than his last one. He told me once that he's saving up to be able to divorce May smoothly. It hurts me to see my little brother going through something like this, but I know that he knows what is best for himself. Thank you for watching till the end. If you felt good about this video, like the video. If you didn't like it, let me know why in the comments. Subscribe too. Your likes and subs lead to our motivation. We have so many videos on our channel as well, so go ahead and take a look. See you.